Okay, so hello everyone. Thanks for taking the time uh, to hear. You know, I've, I've been seeing lots of lot of ones, so hopefully my my speech is not controversial. We have been working together with the Lot Alliance for a long time to make this as smooth as possible. Um, and they have to say, not easy to make a presentation after Scott. So you guys, you guys are doing great stuff. Probably the most challenging thing I did recently was to build an house for my daughters, but uh, that's that's it. Okay, so my background, as, uh, as was mentioned, my background has been on the, the Wireless Broadband Alliance, which so is an organization. I will not spend much time going over what we do, but I imagine you didn't have much contact with us before. So I'll just present a couple slides on that and then move on to real use cases where I'm, I'm going to talk why it makes sense to have a combined deployment of LoRaWAN technology, Wi-Fi, and potentially some private networks, private 5G, private LTE. My background is on telecom. I used to work for telecom operators uh, 15 years uh, back, 15 years, while I was trying to come up with an m 2 strategy. And I have to be honest, it was not easy. Not many people believe the IoT would grow. So I'm really happy to see examples like the ones brought from Scott, Reynard, and many others throughout this, this conference. Okay, so about the, the WBA, so we are a nonprofit. So we, as I mentioned, we are partners of the Lord Alliance, but we really focus more on, on Wi-Fi and interoperability of unlicensed technologies. So such as Lord of One, um, Wi-Fi works on unlicensed spectrum. So the economic value is huge. So compared to uh, the other technologies, probably I would risk saying are two of the most successfully uh, successful technologies in the history of the, of the industry. And that's why we believe it made perfect sense for us to work together. So our vision is to lead the development of seamless and interoperable services experiences on wireless within the global ecosystem. Um, we have work groups. So some of these work groups, they are open. So if you want to, to get to know more information, we are working on, on 5G, of course, IoT, but also roaming, some policy and spectrum topics. We have a couple events. I'm going to talk about that. But clearly, our focus is to drive more seamless and secure experiences. So right now, we have around 150 member, uh, 160 members. So something I will just share that uh, I believe one of the reasons why we work nicely with the Lloyd Alliance and other organizations is that we don't have a specific flavor of members. So you can see that, for instance, in our board, we have, of course, telecom operators, but also cable operators. You can see internet players like, like Google or Facebook. Then we have the chipset guys, so like Intel, Broadcom. But then Semtech is also part of the, of the membership. Um, and finally, we also have satellite companies like Viasat, Inmarsat. So I think this ecosystem, this multitude of players, really helps us bringing practical programs to the industry and executing trials. And those trials is something I'm going to, to talk about. Okay, so before we do that and to finalize the, the WBA piece, so we are organized in, in work groups. So each of these work groups, they meet regularly. So either weekly, uh, they also meet face to face, but most of the work we do has a finite scope. So we always try to come up with a, let's say a deliverable. So either a guideline, a trial, also we do specifications. And for each of these projects towards the mid of the year or the end of the year, you will see something that you can bring to your companies and train, let's say, your engineering teams, your you know, product teams on what's next for each of these technologies. I will just mention a few examples. So clearly the conver conversions, it's really important to us. So 5G and Wi-Fi. Then on the IoT, there is a trend of industrial IoT. So we are working on some Wi-Fi 6C, Wi-Fi 7 technology, the smart home that includes not only LoRaWAN, but again, Wi-Fi, Matter, ZigBee, trying to converge all those technologies into one piece. On the next gen is more focused on architectures for the home. The rooming is something that I believe we have lots of opportunities to work together and there is some work to be done, especially for the verticals of assets management, moving vehicles, everything that requires assets from moving from national to private networks within a lot of one environment, but also internationally. And finally, testing and interoperability that focus on QoS. So as in the lot of one world, as we move into more advanced use cases, QoS is a very important factor. So for instance, cameras and surveillance, if it's a critical facility, these operators, they want an SLA. We need to give them 
the SLAs they want, so the critical venues and, and installations are not broken or, or compromised by any reason. So we really try to make a sense of QoS because in an unlicensed world, this is not something we built from the ground up like the seller world. So we are catching up in coming up with this dynamic uh, quality of service mechanisms and real-time delivery of those, of those parameters. Okay, so let's uh, delve into the IoT ecosystem and the way we see it. So this is probably one of the most common used charts in terms of the, of the layers of the IoT world. So there are you know, different players, different companies focusing on these layers. So our perspective is that we should have a really agnostic framework that can be modular, scalable, and agnostic to the different players that are implementing these technologies. So we have created what we call open roaming that I'm going to talk about it later on, but hopefully this gives the layer that is missing in order to scale up some of the developments and introdu introduction of new assets uh, depending on the, on the vertical. Okay, so the track record. So in terms of the history, so we started the collaboration with the Lot Alliance back in 2017. Uh, along these years, we have held joint events, joint calls, so Lot Alliance membership could join, Double Bay membership would join. We have common members, so as in everything, that's really important. So companies like Orange, Cisco, Comsca Comcast, they, they really help setting the roadmap and the strategy for both alliances. And also, um, we have seen that Wi-Fi service providers are more and more trying to have this multi-service approach. So, for instance, the set-top boxes, having Wi-Fi, having Lotto One. So that's why we started the, the collaboration. And then companies like Semtech, they have provided leadership roles in these work groups, and that has been pivotal really to make sure that what you were developing on the standards community on your side were coming to the practical um, deliverables and trials that Blue Bay was doing. So what we believe are still the ongoing opportunities. So the broadband market more than ever due to pandemics is looking into a way to evolve how we can deliver the best service to the customer and expand the IoT use cases. So I think together, this joint value proposition will help achieving that. Further, I think keep exchanging the experiences we have on this rooming plane. And of course, the work groups within LoRa have been working on that. I think that would be good. So we align our markets and really the customers don't become confused with two, year, two different studies. So I think in this case, one plus one is more than two. Um, third, I think specific verticals like smart cities and smart home IoT is where we could po put the focus from now until um, 2023, where we define our roadmaps. And finally, I know that 5G was something that came as sometimes as a bit of concern for the, 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 the Lotto One community. Uh, but our 5G work group, again, is agnostic. So we try to get the feedback from all the stakeholders. So it's a good opportunity for the actors here to bring your perspective on how Lotto One complements the 5G world and just you know, come up with a converged tra strategy for the, unlicensed, for the unlicensed market. Okay, so uh, in more practical terms, so what were the deliverables until now uh, and the market positioning? So in fact, I used the chart from, um, from my colleagues uh, here at, at the Lord Alliance. And in fact, I would like to thank uh, Donna, Derek, and Remy for, for the invitation. So in this case, Lord One is positioned in the center, but I think this is all converging into the, into the different use cases. So multi-radio access networks are becoming more prevalent. So we did a survey and more than 80% of our members, they plan to deploy still this year any type of converged networks. And when I mean converge, converged, is that you have a centralized platform to manage both radios in terms of the service delivery, in terms of the reporting. So imagine the cost saving in terms of teams that you will have supporting these evolving business requirements. Then uh, we have managed to capture pretty much all the use cases that would benefit from joint co-located deployments. Uh, both on the, on, the, on the venue side and also on the gateway side. And then we also come up with a set of requirements that we want to address in the near future. So there are two pieces of work I would recommend you, if you can, to download and share with, with your team. So one is the deployment synergies, so all the use cases, and the other is trials. So companies that are attending here have provided those, um, those results on, on what they saw once they went to the field. 
Um, okay, before I go into this uh, explaining Wi-Fi, LoRaWAN, and those things uh, come 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 really together. So this is a chart that is on our first piece of work that I really appreciate. That is the different type of use cases. So there is the massive IoT and of course the critical IoT. And here you start seeing that even though we may call you know massive and critical, some technologies are better suited for one or the other. Um, so in, and in terms of the of the details, clearly if you have high intensive high bandwidth consuming applications. Historically, Wi-Fi was doing a good job on that. However, if you were intending for low throughput, long range type communications, lot of one being built from the ground up to achieve that was clearly one of the, the technologies more well positioned to address it. So in terms of the practical use cases, I will just talk about um, uh, four use cases and then give you some practical examples. So if you think about smart cities or smart villages, we try to divide, so Wi-Fi use cases, lot of one use cases, and hybrid use cases. And we put here on the left-hand side, for instance, for Wi-Fi. So easily you can see that everything that is broadband and user access, it's more you know, Wi-Fi. So if you have, I don't know, city center of Paris crowded these days, if people is using the smartphone, so clearly Wi-Fi will be the one uh, doing that. But then if you think about, for instance, you know, Water, gas, monitoring, some of the water manage management systems we talked here. So the, the, the firefighters, first responders type systems, you know, counting people. So everything in the city environment that doesn't require you to be constantly, constantly connected and having high bandwidth can be kind of divided. We divide the world in, in this type of, of use cases. What we see is that you know, some companies like smart, smart pole companies, lighting companies, are even putting antennas that have both radios. And that really facilitates the, the job of the decision makers. So the government officials, when they launch RFPs, they always hear the story. And those companies coming with joint convert strategies are really making a difference uh, when they present this, this vision that WBA and Lot Alliance work together. Okay, but if we talk about smart cities, I think automotive is also a paradigmatic example. So clearly, you know, the connected car. So if we imagine a Tesla and the batch telematics upload that needs the vehicle needs to do. So ideally, this is done on a, on a high bandwidth network and the build shock that we are seeing and some of the movement of these car makers that were using cellular connectivity. Now they are trying to see what are the options. Can I use some type? or flavor of unlicensed connectivity. So they are really looking and then paying more attention to unlicensed wireless. So again, one opportunity for Wi-Fi and, and lot of one. Um, and, and I think the use case is, of course, you, you know it, but everything the vehicle needs just from, you know, sharing the location from time to time, you know, some smart parking, just share a couple, you know, couple bytes of data. So clearly a lot of one would do that job right. Uh, on the Wi-Fi side, you know, telematics, upload, you know, video, um, you know, streaming. So that's, again, where we have the, the sweet spot for deploying uh, both, both technologies. Um, I would say also smart buildings because we have seen lots here about smart buildings and, and all the sensors. So there is one angle here on the smart buildings that we, we, are, we are having more and more. It's the difficulty um, of making sure there is a good in-building coverage. So because of you know, these you know, talks and, and mandates to make greener building deployments, so I see that uh, the coverage with more metal is becoming really an issue. So even you know, public networks, macro networks, will probably not fit well for the job. So private, lot of one, Wi-Fi, of course, is private, will create this ecosystem within the building that a, man, a manager, so the IT guy there, will have lots of challenges to make sense of multiple platforms. So clearly the use cases we see for you know, Wi-Fi, it's keep evolving on the seamless onboarding of these networks, you know, having all these massive surveillance security going. Um, and then on the lot of one, of course, all the, the, the sensors we have throughout the building for, you know, control systems, air conditioning will keep doing the job well. And again, I think it's all about how we are having the upper layer um, working nicely and all those APIs so the systems communicate with the central platform. And finally, going more into the practical examples, I just include here one of the, um, of the use cases of the second paper I mentioned, so the trials one. So this is one example for, for multifamily dwelling um, residential 
buildings. So this company, Boeing Wireless, uh, they were working on both technologies in the field. So this is just one technical diagram of what they managed to implement in a, in a real environment. So there is a Wi-Fi subsystem that you can see coming through the typical access points on the left hand side and the clients are attaching. So these are, you know, the combination of the, the gear that is needed to deploy Wi-Fi at a certain venue. And there is a remote uh, operation center, a remote knock, and that's really key. Then on the right hand side, there was a lot of one subsystem. So again, picking up all the sensors, the application servers, the gateways, um, and, and one management system there also to execute that. But then what is interesting is that they created a common network infrastructure so they, were, they had some savings here because passing more cable and coverage is quite complex. And, and above all, what I think was one of the, the, the breakthroughs was the remote diagnostics and monitoring and management. So that was a key value prop when they went and, and did this, um, this deployment. Okay, so shifting gear. So we talked about Wi-Fi and Lotto One. It makes sense. There are use cases for both. Together, the market will have a joint messaging um, and it's already happening. So the extra layer that I would like to bring to this discussion is also this concept of open roaming. So open roaming was built as a, an agnostic set of frameworks that allow different providers, identities, owners of identities. So this can be your average mobile operator that owns your SIM card, can be your IT you know, partner from the, the, the airline that is giving you a loyalty card or can even be an IoT company that is just giving dev IDs or net IDs, uh, thinking about the lot of worlds um, to a certain, you know, entity. And on the other side, we kind of created the, y, the, the network onboarding. So imagine you own this venue here, the Palais du Congrès. So I had issues connecting to, to, to the Wi-Fi. So it, it was not great. So I was trying and the, the, it was slow. Then I don't have the SLAs. They don't know if I was coming from free Wi-Fi from the lot of one. Then I managed to get the password. Eventually it was working. But I spent like 15 minutes of, of my time here on this event, just sorting out the basic thing that should be like water, um, you know, or, or, or energy should work like that. Um, and this to say that if we really you know, create a line and cross a line. Everyone has identities in, in, in the phones, on the devices. So we try to create this agnostic framework. So if you have any of these, if you are data manager of, of the Palais du Congrès here in Paris, or if you have a user, you can connect them to this federation and things will happen magically. I would go outside here from this, you know, Congress to another venue, to my hotel, to the airport, and everything would be seamless. And this works, you know, of course, on this granular level, but works also for macro use cases. So if I'm having a container ship coming from the US back to, to London, there is an automatic way for the, the, the owners of the ports to connect to this framework and those IoT devices would attach automatically. So this is the vision. Uh, in, in technical terms, um, all the stakeholders can get involved. So this is just another representation. These guys don't work alone. So there is space for business. And I know some companies in, in the lot of the lot of one world focus on interoperability in creating rooming hubs. So on the joint partnership, some companies have joined the effort like Actility. So we appreciate all those initiatives. And if we can make that work um, even, even better. In the end, we want the end users and the devices to work um, in, in a consonant manner. So finally, on this one, the building blocks. So we just have three things here. So it's a cybersecurity service. So it's a PKI infrastructure. It's, you know, open. So any entity can join. So there is a cloud federation. So this is how all the identities are managed. So we don't have a stake in this business. So we have the standards. But the members then, they keep the identities on their specific cloud automation. And finally, the network automation that leverages some automated provision, provisioning and uses pass point. There is also something that become pre prevalent in uh, pretty much all the end user uh, devices. Okay, so just to finalize the open rooming piece, uh, another example coming from the, um, the paper in terms of the trial. So this was one example in, in Switzerland. So you can see how the fabric was coming together. So this one was from, from Cisco. So they were using two line of sight providers 20 kilometers apart with the lake of Geneva 
um, in between. And what they managed to do was to activate the, the open roaming fabric concept. And then the same devices that were coming from one of those locations to the other, they would have uh, an automatic attachment and continue having the exact same services. And that was seamless to the both the providers and, and the customers. So yeah, quite a nice achievement showing that this is all real and can be um, can be achieved. So just leaving a teaser as I end my uh, presentation. So what's going to happen next? And if you are interested, we you know come up with a set of um, of recommendations for future work. Uh, so this is based on member collaboration. So if you are interested, we need to hear your voice because our work is is based on. Uh, the number of companies willing to contribute. But yeah, so you know this, so I'll not go into details. It is just the lot of one roaming architecture and the backend signaling. So this was something that we looked into to come up with some of the, um, of the proposals on how we could have the joint server and the, the dev IDs and the net IDs to come together. And really the conclusion that uh, is up for um, the next steps is how we can have also not only this basic roaming, but also settled roaming. So there are some steps, but imagine you want you own the customer. You are the one putting the ships or, or the IoT gateways into the car. So if that car goes from to another network, maybe you are entitled to receive some revenue from that. And for that to happen, we have this you know, opportunity to align the roaming frameworks from the WBA, some of the work done in the Lot Alliance, and also the work going on for the private networks. So this is just one example on how, for instance, if we just think about some of the three components that I believe are key, to make this work for the, the, the Lotto one, the net ID, the H net ID, and the dev UI. So there are ways to create the automatic conversion with what's being used live in the field from all these operators and deliver some working solution and prototype uh, to the industry. So um, saving some time, I will just summarize uh, the use cases that you can see on the, on the paper. So I already mentioned two. But I imagine, you know, you know most of these companies, but we also have one uh, trial then for indoor, outdoor asset tracking for automotive industry with Actility here and the ABA. I mentioned Boeing, also charter cable operators, all, also very actively the smart city pole, light poles, then Cur Curlink and then smart traffic did the analytics uh, for retail stores. And finally, um, we had the tracking uh, with a lot of one wedge and, and the satellites to resolve some of the wildlife uh, conflicts also present on the on the paper, so pretty much covering all the all the range. So uh, before I finish, uh, just leaving uh, one one open invitation. So if you want to continue this joint IoT, uh, Wi-Fi, private network discussions, so we just came out of one event in Chicago. There was one presentation from uh, the Lot Alliance. I think it was well received. So we are open to continue working together. Next, we are going to Amsterdam, uh, the RAI in October and in Q1, we go back to Asia Pack in, uh, in Singapore. So if you need more information or want to discuss any of these topics, I just leave my contact. Uh, thank you so much for your time, for the invitation and looking forward to the next steps. Thank you.